All right, while well, we're getting set up here for the next game, who out there in the audience is ready for some wonderful, very well-made video games? <laughs> well, that is a shame because this is the awful games block. We're setting up Lagoon with PJ. Tired of games with swords that can actually hit things? Don't worry, Lagoon has got you covered. This is a story of a boy and his butter knife. We have a $50 donation from Demon Fire. It says, Awful Games Done Quick is always good fun. It's a shame that sleep is a thing, and I will likely miss a lot of this block. Well, we appreciate the donation anyway. If you want to duct tape your eyelids open and keep watching, no one will think less of you. We have a $50 donation from Rav Klein. This is an awesome event. Shout out to all the runners from Denmark. We have a $25 donation from Kiari. First time viewer of AGDQ and seeing the generosity and camaraderie of the gaming community is making me misty eyed. Thank you all for this awesome event. We have a $25 donation from Talisman. First donation of many. Love AGDQ, especially since it goes to a cause that is so close to my heart. This donation is in honor of my sister for beating thyroid cancer to save other people's lives. Good luck to all the runners, and shout out to the tech crew for making this possible. We have a $100 donation from Naser. Of course the stream crashed when PJ was up next. My second team Poor Life Choices donation, and I have to support PJ during the game that gave me my online tag of 20 years and got me into watching AGDQ marathons. I love the greatest games done quick block. Good luck.
We have $20 from Fleos. Ain't nobody got time to read that. Go fast and kill animals. Thank you for your donation. Hey, I can hear. I can oh. hear PJ. Uh oh. Can I hear everybody else? Can you? Can you hear me? I can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. I cannot yep. hear the game though. No, no game yet. Yep. Still no game. No game yet. audio yet. <laughs> I can hear that controller. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cranky. <laughs> Round three. <laughs> Round three. Crunchable okay, Nintendium. I can still hear them and me. <laughs> I can hear the game audio back there. Hey, there, there we go. There we go. <laughs> if only he could, uh, see Wolf. If only he could. Don't worry, I'll remind him. <laughs> yeah. I will remind yeah, him. Yeah, that's your, your job is to remind me to save. Yeah, no problem. Don't All right, save. We're good. All right, excellent. Uh, three, two, one, go. Okay, uh, welcome to Awful Games Done Quick. Uh, this is Lagoon, nine PJ. Um, I'm joined today by Crew on the Couch. If they want to introduce themselves. I'm Clage. Poexel. Breakdown. All right, so uh, Lagoon is an interesting game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the nicest word you could PJ say. PJ only it. finally learned what the story I, was like a couple weeks ago to that, this game. Too. That's not yeah. true. I tried to learn what the story oh. was a couple weeks ago, and I still have not succeeded. Um, so this, <laughs> what they try and tell us this story is about, uh, first of all, I am Nasir, the hero of light, and... Uh, Apparently, the water is muddy, and muddy water has attracted demons. Uh, I don't know how they know this, but you get a different story when you go around town and you talk to different people. Some people are like, oh yeah, the last time the water was, the water was muddy, there were demons all over. And then other people are like, I've never seen muddy water here before. I don't know what's causing this. Yeah. You can see it there. And yeah, th yeah, that's totally muddy. Yeah. yeah. Just limitations of the Super Nintendo hardware. Yeah, no, we don't have... We don't have room for brown colors in this game. No. <laughs> no. It, um, it should be noted that the back of the box for this game, uh, the town you're in, is called Lakeland because super creative naming. Uh, but the literal start off to the description on old Super Nintendo games always had a neat little description on the back of the box. And it literally starts off with Lakeland has a drinking problem. <laughs> That's almost as good as the Seven Sagas text yeah. <laughs> box. <Yeah. Yep. laughs> All right, so please put these on and get ready to go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nailed it! All right, we'll we'll, we'll figure this out. Yep. Yeah. So where we're at right now, um, this is Atland, and up north is the Gold Cave. And apparently, there was an avalanche there. Um, what? what? <laughs> so we're going to an armor shop to buy weapons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. And short sword is a very appropriate name for that weapon too, yep. as we'll see shortly. We yeah. get a long sword later, right? Uh, you get a silver sword and silver a magic sword. sword. But no, no long sword. Yeah, oh. just shorter, shorter <laughs> sword. Uh, yeah, so they're like excavating because it's a gold cave or something. So they're they're blasting stuff apart. Uh, oh, I noticed that weapon shop doesn't yeah, actually sell weapons <laughs> yeah. <that's> too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you try and go in the gold cave, they say, "Hold on, no one can come in here except for all the the miners and the two random kids that got in past us." Um, so you have to go back, <laughs> and they won't let you in until you have a sword. So you have, they're like, go to the weapon shop and buy the sword. So I go to the weapon shop, 
which sells items. And the first time I played this, it, it, I'm not kidding, it took me literally an hour to get to this point, because I just had no idea what was going on, because a ton of people would not help me. So, this is Gold Cave. Uh, you, <laughs> you saw the very first thing that I did is save the game. Yep. Uh, this is an extremely dangerous game, and uh, so where we're at right now, there's one kid that escaped, and he might be dead. Uh, I don't think you ever see him again, so I, I think he's dead. But there's another one that's stuck in here, and I'm coming in to save him, and to save him, you need a healing pot. Uh, so normally you would, uh, you would collect one in this... Easy. Easy. Okay. All right, I think I have seven experience I need to kill. Not myself. <laughs> so you're seeing how uh, how combat works right. in Lagoon, and that is that you have a very, okay, very, very short sword. Uh, you notice how PJ you might you should be able to tell through this even through the stream that PJ is kind of stutter stepping briefly as he's walking. And that's because mm -hmm. when you stand still in this game, your uh, health and magic uh, recharges. Um, but we don't want to stand still because this is a speed run. So, but. Just because the game checks if you're standing still at certain frame intervals, if he uh, stutter walks like that, he can try to hit some of those triggers and then get healing without really losing much movement speed. Yeah. Six. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're coming in to save this guy. You, you would normally get the healing potion um, in the cave, but it's 25 seconds faster to just go to the weapon shop and buy one. Um, but... <laughs> Because you have exactly enough money to buy all of the equipment, um, I have to sacrifice armor to buy the potion. So I'm playing through this with just a shield, and I'm going to play for the next hour with just a shield. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to be absolutely clobbered if I get hit by enemies. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a really fast strategy, but it's a big gamble. Uh, but it's okay. You know, I'm fine with making that because I can save anywhere. In fairness, you can just run into whatever you want as long as you aren't trying to hit it. <laughs> it's, it's true. Yeah, so shields, the reason I bought the shield over the armor is that the shield has another property, and that's if you're just walking into an enemy and not swinging or anything, if you just walk dead on into an enemy, you'll just bump them harmlessly away. Uh, but if you swing, then you get yours. And as you can see, the quality of the game is being shown off quickly as we're doing an escort quest less than five minutes into the game. Yep, yep. So this is the kid that was hurt. Um, somehow he wounded his leg, and instead of coming back down the mountain, he climbed to the top of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, to, uh, we had to fix him up right quick and come get him. And now he's a Pac-Man ghost. Yes, it, <laughs> he is. Yeah, so he's, he's always going to try and cover the longest distance between us. So like right here, I'm more left than down, so he's going to go left. So I can kind of steer him that way, but I can't speed him up at all. Fortunately, the healing pot we gave him also makes him immortal, so he, yes. he can't actually be injured or killed by monsters here. Yep. But we, but uh, PJ does need to wait for him to catch up before he can uh, trigger a sc uh, screen transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so what I do here, now, like since I have to wait, I just try and kill as many enemies as I can without screwing up his navigation. And uh, the ultimate goal here is to reach... I gotta be safe save. <laughs> They've got a whiteboard and <laughs> yeah. that they hold up periodically to remind me to save. Yeah, because like PJ's record at this game is deathless and saveless, so it's uh, yeah, it's, yep. something, it's something easy to forget the way he plays this. So. Yeah. Your real goal should be to show off Hercules. That's more important. Fortunately, <laughs> I was able to kill Hercules. Yeah, I know. I'm sad. It's, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's very important. Uh, there's no level up indication or anything when you level up. Like in Crystallis, like you kill the enemy and it's like, boom, level up, the game pauses and you're happy. And that's just like, eh, great job. You killed another <laughs> enemy. You're marginally stronger now. Uh, so what I use to, uh, to try and gauge what level I am is my maximum MP. So you start with three MP max. Right now, it was at eight and it's up to nine, so I know I leveled up to level three. Um, I'll have 10 MP max at level 3. But I want to reach level 2 as early as possible. how many hits he took from that monkey, too. I mean, get used to that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very, very easy to just get comboed to death like that mm -hmm. by enemies if, if, you're, if you can't bump them away with the shield. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have almost no invincibility frames. Yep. If you get hit into a wall, you're almost instantly killed. Yep. Um, and then there's bosses. I'm sure you bosses. <laughs> yeah, bosses, bosses we'll get into. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that when we get to the first boss. <laughs> yeah. It's really critical that I reach level two on the first floor, or rather as early as possible. 
uh, because since I don't have the armor, you know, it's only it's only 10 defense, but 10 defense at the beginning of the game is a huge amount of defense. So I can actually only survive one hit at level 1 uh, before I have to start regenerating my health. At level 2, I can survive two hits, and at level 3, I might still only be able to survive two hits, but... No, let's... No, I can probably survive three or four. Might be okay. Might being the yeah. key word. Might be, yeah. You should test that theory. I, yeah, I just... <laughs> May as well. Um, I'm not going to be able to reach level 4. That requires a lot more enemies, and it's not important. I'm still going to be doing the minimum amount of damage possible in the next boss. And uh, my goal is to just not get hit against him, so I really don't care about survivability right now. Yeah, PJ picks very, very specific points in the game to grind because the XP curve in this game with what enemies give or don't give is not entirely sensical. Oh, yeah, no, it's real stupid. <laughs> it's real stupid. Yeah, like the enemies. Yeah, you in don't this need region. to mince words. This is awful GDQ. That's true. Yeah. Well, I forgot. Yeah. We're an awful block now. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we brought Giles back home. He's happy. He can move at a normal speed now because he's in the town. Yep. And uh, we're going to go see what's going on here. And you regenerate health at a much faster rate now. Yes. So, yes. Good thing you have a lot of it to regenerate <laughs> right now. All right. Here he is. We'll go to the place of faith. Now, if you go to the place of uh, place of faith before saving Giles, they're just like, get out of here. We don't have anything to tell you. <laughs> like, wow, nice, nice people. So we talked to that old woman, and uh, she tells us, I don't even know where, this is just like out of left field, but she's just like, hey, you saved Giles. Uh, anyways, we locked up this really dangerous, scary monster in the gold cave, and uh, he's completely stuck in there. But if you want to open him up and try and kill him, here's the key. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Intent. So, yeah, you know, I'm going to go check it out. There, I'm not even trying to simplify things more than it is. No. It's like, that's it. There's yeah. nothing else. This is the plot. Yeah. Plot is a relative term for Lagoon. Mm -hmm. Save. I'm going to save when I get there. I should oh, okay. be safe enough. Famous last word. Yep. <laughs> Incoming son of Hercules. Yeah, there's. Oh, well, these two guys could pin me against the wall. Okay. See, he, he saw. Yeah, he, he knew, knew I saved. He's <laughs> he like, knew. all right, here I come. Oh, okay, hold on. We good. Eight? Yep. It's like, up. <laughs> oh, we got us a save scummer in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, here we are. Let's see how we do. Interesting jump distance. Yeah. That's new. Uh, he normally stops in the middle of the screen, but... Good save. Yeah. Okay. Get used to that elephant Get, roar, too, yeah, by the yeah. way. Every boss, yeah. including human bosses, all make that noise when they die. The Dalsim roar. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> apparently the developers were a big fan of Dalsim's stage in Street Fighter 2. Yeah. All right, so we did it. We killed Samson and then brought the entire cave down. Oops. And uh, that's the only exit to Atlan, so I think I might have just doomed that town. Yep. Either that or the old lady just locked the door behind Yeah. Her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was your plan all along. So, as you saw during that fight, PJ put him in a stun lock, and it is possible to actually stun lock him from 100 to 0, but yeah. it's very, very, very difficult to do. Yeah. It, it's, not, it's not terribly rare, um, but... Yeah, normally he jumps, like, in the middle of the room and you not know. all the way to the door. So that kind of, you know, that kind of surprised me. Uh, so here we are in Elf Field. This is Philip's castle. The water is still very muddy. Yeah. Um, this, br this bridge. Philip's castle is the best backstory of, like, any oh, yeah. quest oh, this in is, RPG. Yeah. This is really beautiful. Too. I, had, I had to stop the stream and walk away. When I <laughs> <Yep. read> <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, what happens here? <laughs> Philip's castle... <laughs> When uh, every 1,000 years, when sunlight hits it, so that's that's pretty rough. Um, but every 1,000 years, it gets hit by sunlight and falls asleep. And to wake it up, uh, we have to find the password that's on these three tablets. Yeah, there's people from the nearby town we haven't gone to yet that are 
we're in the castle for reasons I don't think they ever really go into. No. Mm -hmm. the, well, who cares? <laughs> yep. That, were, that, are, that are in the castle, too. Yeah. And despite having 1,000 years of advanced warning, <laughs> still got stuck inside the castle. Yep. <laughs> you also yeah. noticed there for the first time that PJ was actually jumping, and that's not just for fun. Like, if he falls in those pits, it's an automatic death. I'm not going to kill these things. They're not grouped up well. It's not worth it. The, the, guy, the guy next to the entrance also knows everything about the castle, and despite him being in the same town, people didn't listen to him. Yep. He got stuck. Yeah, and he also, despite knowing everything about the castle, doesn't actually know anything about the castle <laughs> or the giant monster that's in there waiting for me. Yep. <laughs> so we go to the mayor's house, and he's like, oh, you're someone that I haven't seen before, so you're here to save us. Here, take all of our treasured items and uh, go save the people that somehow got stuck in the castle. Correct. So we get the movable mantle, which is what we need to save them, and we get uh, the earth staff, which is what we use to make magic. Um, so the magic in this game, you uh, there's 16 different spells, and um, it's just based on combining one crystal with one staff. So I have the fireball magic. It's not going to change ever. Like the earth staff plus fire crystal makes fireball, and that's it. Um, Hi, Thor. Yeah, this, this is Thor. He's he's a mean person. <laughs> we don't know that yet, but he is. So this is our second escort mission. Uh, Thor, Thor somehow, I don't know. He he knows where the other tablet is, and really wants me to go with him to get it. He just wanted a walk partner, man. This yeah. forest is lonely. <laughs> So I don't actually have to escort him here. He he knows where it is. I'm of no use to him. Uh, so I'm just going to take this opportunity to uh, kill some stuff. And then he goes, wow, look it, I found it. And I go, yeah, I know. Uh, and now we have to bring him back to town again. And this time he is following me. So he's supposed to be following me. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna be killing enemies as much as I can while we wait here. Um, the main speed tech in Lagoon is just being efficient at killing enemies. Like that's pretty much it. Uh, so I want to kill enemies while moving as much as possible, and Magic is really really good at doing that. Okay, should have 19 here. So the the Magic in this game does a set amount of damage. Um, there there is. There is one exception. I don't really know why it happens, but it does sometimes. But for all intents and purposes, it's it's a set amount of damage. And it's really, really strong at this point in the game. So I'm going to be using the fireball magic a lot here, and then never again. But it's now time. We have united the tablets. We know the password. We're ready to wake up the sleepy castle and uh, go save these people. And we have some sweet Lagoon slap bass going on, too. <laughs> if he falls off any of those bridges, it's instant death, yep. too. <clears throat> yep, instant game over. So not only do you have a tiny sword, but there's platforming. And all the platforming involves death. Yeah. There's some really top-tier platforming late in the game, mm -hmm. too. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good. That's going to be very exciting. Uh, to see how the TV's <laughs> contrast is. <right> there. <laughs> oh. It's like yep. bright white on white background. <laughs> Speaking of which, we have a $50 donation from Banana the Bread. Oh, nice. It's incidentally my favorite Sonic the Hedgehog character as well. Uh, they say, this is the first AGDQ I've been able to watch live. It's my second donation. First donation was during your amazing Battle Block Theater run with Mecha Richter. Awful Block is by far my favorite portion of AGDQ. Best of luck to PJ. I hope you memorize the awful color scheme of them cloud jumps. <laughs> Thank you. Donation goes to my favorite PLC runner, PJ. Runner's choice. All right, so we got the key of prison. Um, now we're going to go in the basement and free these people. Uh, it, it might be worth noting that the second armor and the second shield are here, but it takes time to collect those, so I'm not going to. I'm going to... <laughs> Going to continue without armor. Mm -hmm. Most likely to his detriment, too. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to get hurt real bad soon. 
Um, I'm also about five levels under leveled at this point. Yeah, that's going to be an ongoing thing with the speedruns. PJ's going to be hitting content far, far, far under yep. the ideal level. Yeah, I think, I think I catch up to about where they expect me to be at one point, and then I fall really far behind yeah. again. The vast majority of the game, he'll be doing basically minimum damage to almost every boss. Yes. And it should be noted that in pretty much every case, magic is useless against bosses. Yeah. There's also certain levels he can be at where he does no damage, too, <laughs> yeah, because yep. of how the game ra does rounding. Yeah, there's a glitch in the damage formula. <laughs> so if your attack stat is really, really low, the game's like, hey, man, you really shouldn't be here. But if you really want to fight the boss, I guess you can do two damage. Um, and that's cool, because I'm going to be do doing two damage to most of these bosses. Um, but if your attack stat is like kind of close to where it should be, but not quite, they'll be like, no, it's fine, we'll use the normal damage formula, and it'll do uh, one or zero damage. So there are certain level and equipment combinations on certain bosses where you will literally do zero damage. Like you'll, you'll swing and it'll go ting, and they blink white and just nothing. <laughs> Absolutely no damage. We have a $100 donation from Sloshed Coder. Hey, PJ, sorry I made that toad blow up on you during Battle Block Theater. <laughs> Here's $100 to Runner's Choice to make up for it. Thank you. Uh, this guy is moving in an interesting way. All right, we found the people. Let's save them. <laughs> save them. Save, save them. them. They'll be fine. Yeah, sure they will. That's your definition of save. They'll them. be fine. All right, we have the movable mantle. Let's go. So, they give us the key of Phillips, um, and then we use the movable mantle on them and completely destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> I... And, I think a, a guy that we didn't have to talk to told us to save a princess or something, too. Yeah, if you don't have the movable mantle when you talk to them, one of the guys will talk to you about a princess who is actually a key plot element that is never mentioned mm -hmm. <laughs> until she's already captured. <laughs> yep. Correct. We could have maybe saved her if you just told me that she was important. You also notice that PJ picks his menuing very carefully as the menu takes forever to load in and out in this game. Yep. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's like eight seconds if you can efficiently menu. Mm -hmm. Oh, and if you, if you missed our earlier explanation too, the reason he's stutter walking like this is to be able to regenerate health and magic without having to stand still. Yeah. Yeah, it's really important here because I do need both health and magic. Um, I'm not going to need magic very much after like this dungeon and the next one. But right here it's really important because if these whiz robes jam me, I have to mash three fireballs, which is nine magic. Um, they're super, super dangerous. Like their fireballs will do, uh, we're probably gonna find out soon. <laughs> a, a, about 70% of my max health right now. Yeah, you'll notice PJ also jumps a lot here. That's because the jumping's not just for platforming. It can actually evade projectile attacks in this game. Yes. Because apparently everybody shoots at the floor. <laughs> Shoot the aim for the feet. <laughs> yep. All right, that was a really good basement. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> they know. Yeah. They know. All yeah, right. I want to reiterate that the tech crew has a whiteboard with save written in all caps that they keep holding up to remind me. So, um, let's see, I should be level 6 right now because I have 22 MP, and uh, these enemies take 6 hits. So that's kind of my cue there. And still do a third of your health in one hit. Yeah, that's not going to be changing. Nope. It's just that the third gets to be a bigger chunk <laughs> of <laughs> um, I want to be level 7 when I fight this boss because I can survive one hit at level 7. At level 6, she instantly kills me. So... Instead of needing an absolutely perfect fight, I can kind of screw up for a very brief moment. But we can pretty easily reach that. Like, there's no dedicated farming in this route anymore. It's just like, I've, I've kind of mapped out what enemies I need to kill. So it's not terribly bad. Yeah, a lot of the randomness comes just from enemies being nice enough to be in a good line that PJ can easily take out as he's moving to his destination. Yeah. 
and uh, from from the enemies in the next screen here. So there are two enemies here. There's uh, a cloud and like a weird... Look at these amazing one. load times oh, for the yeah. menu on a <laughs> Super Nintendo cartridge, yep. by uh, the way, too. I mean... It's so good. It's, man, if those if those load times didn't exist, my run would literally be about three minutes faster. Yep. <laughs> Another great right. shot of that horrible muddy water. Yep. We're yeah, trying to, just uh, disgusting. Fix. All right, so these guys, it, it is faster to hit them with the sword, but it is super dangerous. Nice. Um, so I want to hit them with, with magic as much as I can. When the clouds do that thunderstorm thing, they're just completely invincible. <laughs> and uh, they do it randomly, and it lasts a random amount of time. So the clouds are pretty unreliable. See, like that guy, if I had committed to hitting him, it just, I would have wasted a whole bunch of time. Up there is my armor if I want it, but I, I don't. Get out of here. Well, you do. You're just not going <laughs> to go get it. Don't want it. <laughs> Actually, the armor here is pretty neat. Like, you get a blue cape and gold, gold colored armor. Looks pretty nice. We have a $100 donation from Railcoon. It says, Hey, PJ, great to see Lagoon in the marathon again. I would like one request, <laughs> just like in 2012, that we have a few moments of silence for the wonderful music of the Dwarf Cave. <laughs> <laughs> Can do. Yep. <laughs> All right, so this is perhaps the hardest boss in the game. Um, we'll see how this goes. I'll explain it afterwards. This is Nutella, or Nutella, as we sometimes call her. <laughs> Not a good start. Okay, that should be good. Okay. Or... Um, huh? She should have been in desperation. Yeah. There. She knew. I'm apparently not even at max health. Wouldn't have helped, though. So. All right, <clears throat> second attempt. Gonna wait for next cycle. Two. Third attempt. <laughs> So that's apparently desperation health, but when she had lower health, it wasn't. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, what makes this fight so difficult is just this very precise rhythm he has to do to keep the stun lock going for parts of her health bar, while get also getting the jumps off to dodge uh, fireballs when she breaks out. That's certainly enough. Yeah. That. Okay. Hitboxes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. there we go. All right, we're finally clear. We did it. There's one pixel you can stand on here. Um, and if you're too close, then you get hit. And if you're too far away, then you won't be able to hit her. So that's that's easily one of the scariest one of the scariest parts of the run. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'll get, I'll try and explain how she works. <laughs> um, it's pretty cute the way that you're supposed to beat her. Uh, and that is, you level up six levels higher than I am. <laughs> uh, I, that's not even really a joke. Yeah. So in her normal phase, she'll either shoot fireballs if you're off to the side, or she will charge directly at you if you're in front of her. Um, but in that phase, you're able to lock her into a set of six fireballs. So I'm able to actually attack her in front of her if I lock her in place. Uh, in that fireball cycle, and then I have to get out of the way before she decides to charge at me. When she gets in the desperation phase, she will always charge at you no matter where she is in her cycle if you're in front of her. And at that point, it is impossible to attack her ever. Like, the moment you stand in front of her, she will charge at you and push you against the wall and kill you instantly. 
Uh, so you either have to be a high enough level to just trade at that point, or you have to kill her straight away in a fireball cycle, or you have to find the magic pixel like I did there. And again, he cannot go use his projectile or magic. It will do absolutely no damage to that fight. Or right. Any boss yeah, no, fight you, you can't magic. even use magic. Yep. That's it's just, oh, that's right. They just lock it out. Yep. So you have to use the sword. Yep. Yeah, he just got a new sword, and it's still a butter, it, yeah. butter knife <laughs> length, <laughs> too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a silver short sword. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot stronger, uh, which is neat. But it's still pretty hard to hit enemies with. All right, so killing Natella there opens up a door on the first floor of this castle, and they just never tell you that. <laughs> you just have to go find it. Like, you can go back to town and talk to people. The people you just saved aren't there. Nope. Uh, because uh, I'm pretty sure I killed them with the movable mantle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you just have to come back and, uh, and find it. Yeah, cause, I mean, this game is kind of an ease wannabe at heart, but what really sets it apart is the, uh, the sword and the goofy story mm, and yeah. the plot triggers. And the screen scrolling. I mean, we never really, it's pretty obvious by now, but uh, the screen will absolutely refuse to scroll until you're like 20% from the side. So <coughs> when you're playing through the first time, the only indication you have that an enemy is approaching is that the game slows down because of lag. <laughs> so like right here, you can kind of sense it slowing down. <laughs> you're like, all right, there's got to be an enemy close. We have a $500 donation from the T-Rex. Yeah, applaud that. <laughs> I am, I'm glad I'm able to catch some of Team Poor Life Choices runs, and maybe I'll be able to hang out with some of you great folks again soon. Knock them dead, PJ. Thanks, T-Rex. All right, now, <clears throat> uh, this is the Dwarf Desert. This is a really, really scary place. Uh, we're now getting to the point where enemies can fire projectiles, and enemies do not care. They really don't care. Like, they just, they constantly fire projectiles, whether or not you're close. See? <laughs> yep. <laughs> whether or not you're on camera, whether or not they can see you, they just pick a direction, square up, and let it rip. That was so, all staged, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. And then there are these squirrels that either just don't see you <laughs> or they want extreme cuddle time. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that part is really, really scary. It, but it's fine. I mean, we're going to have to go through there five more times. Welcome yeah. to Two-Tone Town, by the way, too. Yeah. Yep. 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 Two notes. They ran out, all we've now get. heard about five loops of the music for this yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ran out of notes for the rest of the game. All right. So we talked to this guy. If you can get in, use this book. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Nailed it. I will. I'll keep that. I think in this mind. was the second time PJ just lost. Oh, I, I, when, I yep, had to leave. He was actually reading the text. <laughs> I had to leave. Okay. So, um, what happens there? We get some heirlooms from people again. Uh, that old man really didn't give us anything useful. Uh, if you read the book, it just tells you like the prophecy. Safe. It's just like a classical. Yep. <laughs> Classic, uh, because a rock is going to be your friend yeah. if you're not careful. <laughs> no, it's going to be the squirrel that's going to be my friend. I can survive one hit from rocks. I can't survive a hit from squirrels. Yeah, no. Squirrels are ultra danger. Um, yeah, the book is just like blah, 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 hero of light, blah, destiny, darkness, child, such and such. And you're like, great. It doesn't really help me with things. The other thing you can't tell from the art style, but if, when we get to a couple of the cutscenes in the end credits, is this game is secretly, secretly a big pile of anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the reason we're going back here, I didn't forget anything, but Thor did. <laughs> um, Good guy, Thor. Thor. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I don't, I don't even know how he got here. Honestly, I just opened up the door, and he's already waiting in town. Uh, so he booked it, and in the process of booking it, he left his pendant somewhere, some, just somewhere. He has no idea where. Uh, so again, because I played Crystallis growing up. I thought, okay, it's got to just be, you know, like hiding in the grass somewhere, and I'll search the whole map and find. Nope, nope, that's not how it works. No. So we got to go back to the second town and uh, talk to some random person, and she found it. Yep, that's that's where we're at right now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I don't know what the story is with the muddy water. That's just kind of we're dealing with it. <laughs> uh, 
How did anyone finish this game as a child? <laughs> Trial and error. So, like, you just walk around and you get yeah. lost and you I, I didn't stuff. finish it for a reason I'll get into when we get to that part of the, uh, yeah. that part of the story. Yeah. I found this. Is this yours? Uh, sure. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yes. Yep. Did you find any gold bars? Those I, are yeah. also mine. Did you find anything else? <laughs> All right, so we got Thor's pendant. We're gonna equip it because we're gonna lose it soon. I want to wear it. <laughs> um, that... I am Thor. <laughs> yeah, these guys again. They don't really give much uh, much experience, but it doesn't take much effort to just shoot a fireball at them and take their experience. I'll just I'll take whatever I can get right now. Um, even though in the next dungeon there's just enemies that give piles of experience. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know how they thought that that was balanced, but I'm not going to complain because it makes their unbeatable. We have a $100 donation from Fat Shark Robin. I missed donating for your awesome Bionic Commando Rearm 2 run last SGDQ. As the one who coded most of the gameplay, it was oh both my awesome God. and heart-wrenching <laughs> to watch. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So this is who we have to thank for hype mode, then? Yep. Hype uh, mode, yes. Interesting you bring that up. Can't believe one of the hype mode bugs made it into the final product. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to an awesome run of one of my biggest childhood traumas, Lagoon. Oh, oh man. and murder those animals. It'll be my pleasure to take unkind revenge on this game for you. It'll be my pleasure. <laughs> Keep talking, PJ. No, the, rock, the, no. rock, the rocks want to hear your story. I'm going to give him the pain. <laughs> that rock has tried twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. BCR2, that's a heck of a game. I love that game. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Cuddle time. I don't want cuddles. Cuddle time. I don't want cuddles. <laughs> I don't want cuddles. <laughs> they okay. heard you talking about the animals. This yeah. Fan Kill what yeah, animals? By squirrels. <laughs> that might Hey, it's the muddy water. It's making them do things. All right, Thor. I found your pendant. So he made us walk all the way back there, and this is where we start realizing Thor is a jerk. <laughs> so he gives us a mirror and then teleports away. So I'm like, <laughs> man, <laughs> why'd I have to walk all the way back there? It's not even mine. You could have just teleported there. He's got the working movable mantle. You have the, yep, you have yeah. the beta test one. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Seawolf. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, the powerful <laughs> the powerful, powerful mirror, mirror is my favorite item. <laughs> this it's is this <laughs> is a good save was canceled by a jump in the menu. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Up, oh, up, oh. friend. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just like to state that squirrel took three fireballs to the dome and it basically didn't move his health bar. Oh no, the key isn't to move his health bar, it's to push him away so I can run. <laughs> I'm not even joking, he takes like two full mana pools to kill with magic. Uh, the rocks are immune to fire, so like I can't even, I can't even use any of it right now. It just doesn't matter. Have you tried paper? Oh, You wow. can tell me you hate me on stream. I, it's acceptable No, right I'm gonna, now. I'm just gonna build it up for the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you off camera. So, the powerful mirror, Thor tells us, it has the power to break rocks. All right, time for um, music real Coon donated for. Yep. Oh, yeah, moment of silence. Okay, that's enough silence. Yep. <laughs> uh, we have other names for this cave, but we're not allowed, yeah. allowed, yep. allowed to say them. Hey man, Lagoon more, has funky slap pace. More awesome. instant, more instant death pits. All of these. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, yeah. At least. Missing any of these jumps is instant game over. Yep. So the dwarf cave is uh, incredibly scary. There's two enemy types in here, and that's all they need. They've got these lava golems, which are uh, up here, not up the left. Yeah. Side. Where were you going? I don't know. <laughs> Nasir is still trying to figure out why this mirror broke open the entrance. It's powerful. <laughs> it is. Powerful enough to break two rocks. Those two rocks. But just two. Yeah, but not the ones that are shooting fireballs at me. It's oh. not <laughs> quite that powerful. 
Um, I'm going to say it right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For obvious reasons. Yep. It's probably been three years since I've died in that pit, but it's also AGDQ. Yep. So, all right, so these guys shoot five fireballs instead of three, and then there are those things. So, um, up until now, I think the most experience an enemy can give is, like, six. Uh, fire dragons give 34, and these guys give 10. Uh, fire dragons die in two hits. I die in one hit from them, yep. so it's a fair trade-off. Um, I just, I don't even bother killing the lava golems, because it's just, they're impossible to fight. And uh, I think I can survive one fireball from them. Yeah, so basically PJ has hit a prime grinding spot for where this run goes, and it's incredibly dangerous to do anything but be in here, so. Yep. I mean, it's hard to call it grinding when you're in just absolute constant danger of death yes. in the process, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. That was this a this nice is a really, setup. really scary. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. If, if those two lava guys want to zone you out, they will, and they'll just continuously shoot fireballs. And there's there's nothing. There's no pattern at all. They just, like, they walk around, and then when they just decide they hate you, they shoot a random number of fireballs. Sometimes, you know, two. Sometimes ten. All right, so the main reason I'm taking this really roundabout... Okay, got it. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. This yep. really roundabout uh, path is because I want the wind crystal. And every enemy in this cave and on the overworld is weak against wind. So, now they get theirs. <laughs> Three, four more. This doesn't change the fact that they still kill him instantly. Oh, yeah, nope. Yeah. By nope. The way. nope. Nope. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to have the third armor and third shield at this point, and I still have no armor. And level one shield. Yep. Uh, so this guy should not be aggroed yet, but it does not change the plan. <laughs> Good. So you can you can jump over the fire for some reason without taking damage. Um, okay, I will let him live. Fine, fine. There's one more fire dragon I want to kill before I go in here. I remember this dude. This dude. This champion. guy, he's he's the champion. Yep. All right. So the silence cave, which has notably louder music than the actual cave itself. Yep. Has the moonstone, which we need. Um, I'm sure you find that out somewhere, but I was unable to find out where. Oh yeah, that's your your friend the dwarf talking about the ultra powerful sword that they made. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh man, I forgot about that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So. <laughs> One of the... Uh, I'm one enemy short. I should have 46 MP here. So... I'm going to kill him. It's really important that I have 46 MP here because I'm going to need all of it. Uh, back in that, that town, uh, Two-Tone Town, I don't even know what the name of that is. Is that Denigul? Yeah. We're, we're going to go with that. Yep. Um, back in that town, like if you're just talking to random townspeople, they'll be like, hey, welcome. Come on, let me go. Uh, you should check out our fine, <laughs> fine weapons. And you go to the weapon shop, and it has nothing but armor. Yep. Also, the reason PJ went back into the Silence Cave is because the Silence Cave treats regeneration as if it were town rate, so he was able to completely get his health and magic back very quickly. Yeah. Um, I need, I need a bit more HP, so I'm gonna stutter step over there and kill that guy along the way. <clears throat> Here's hoping I don't get killed by these things. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you got killed by those I got, things. I got killed by those things. It's worth the gamble because I give 70 experience. Well, 68. But... Who's counting? Okay. It's really important to get as much experience as you possibly can. We have $250 from the aptly named Impending Disaster. <laughs> yep. Hey, PJ, I'm really happy you're explaining the very rich and coherent plot of Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck dancing with Ella. Thank you. Oh, yes. 939-77993. Never forget. Nope. Heard it, live it, love it. I don't think I can survive a hit right now. We're going to be extra careful. 
now that you guys have kind of seen what happens when mistakes happen in Lagoon, I would just like to reiterate that PJ's, you know, PB of this game has no deaths and no saves. Yeah, that is a really stupid And playing stupid far game. riskier than he's playing right now. Yeah. This is not a game to care about your feelings. No. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Nope. All right, Rock, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> okay, they're apparently invincible when they charge up that attack, which I did not actually know before. But you get that power from here to break rocks, right? Right. Right? right. Okay. So we're covered. Yep. It, would, it would be unfair to use it against them. I like the sport of hunting yeah, rocks. It's not very sporting <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right, so now there's this beautiful piece of, uh, of plot. Um, <laughs> We have to take the Moonstone back to this guy, and um, he just says, Wow, can I see it? Great. I'm glad I'm alive. Here, you can have this thing, uh, which is exactly what we need to get past this lava thing in the, the dwarf cave. So, yeah, we don't, we don't lose the Moonstone. He just wanted to see it. Yep. And uh, now we have to go all the way back in there. Um, the reason I'm really, really... Uh, stressing how important it is to gather experience here is because the next boss has 150 health instead of just like 60 or 40. He has a lot of health and until I'm level 13 I will be doing two damage and he's a cycle based boss. So 75 hits takes a lot of time when you can only hit him every seven seconds, <laughs> three times. Uh, but if I'm level 13 then uh, I do three damage, so you only need 50 hits. So it saves a bunch of time, and it's not much slower to actually farm along the way. My level isn't terribly important for the bosses after this, but for this for this one, it, it is pretty important. Um, I think I grabbed it, but we're gonna find out in about 40 minutes if I did. Uh, <laughs> I think I got the protective ring. Yes, you yeah, did. You did. Okay, yeah. just muscle memory is a hell of a thing, heck of a thing. Uh, so, <laughs> the, uh, the magic rings in this game, there are five of them. When you equip them, it constantly drains your MP until it's zero. And the protective ring increases your defense by 20 or 30. Um, it's, it's a lot. It's a really important amount of, of defense. Uh, so I did get that. I'm not even going to be using it for a while, but I do have to pick it up here. All right, we have, uh, we have a bit more time for some comments, if you'd like to read some. All right, we have $35 from Yagamoth. PJ, Lagoon, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you will attempt to swing to the music again later. Have fun and good luck. Thank you. Yeah, you I'll better at least best. have some attempts at it in Lagoon Castle. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. I might die trying it, but I'll, I'll do It'll it. It'll be worth it. That's what I'm hoping for. It'll be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we have $50 from Defrost FX. Second donation this AGDQ simply for Lagoon. Didn't know anyone else played this game. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't. But <laughs> this guy's about to show me what for. <laughs> kept me yeah. entertained on deployment. Good luck, and it's not the size of the sword, but how you use it. I didn't know that this still game doesn't really help when it comes to Nessir. No. no, I didn't know this game existed until I met PJ, and yet another reason I'm not sure why I still talk to him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, this this is one game I had a I had a friend uh, years ago, and he said this was his favorite Super Nintendo game, and I didn't even know it existed. Um, I saw like I saw that there was a published video on test videos by Omnipotent Entity. Uh, by the way, it's an amazing task, one of yeah, my favorites. Um, but yeah, I saw the thumbnail for the game, and I was like, nope, no way, I, <laughs> I can't. Uh, but I saw it at a game store like years later for a few bucks, so I picked it up and uh, did not like it. it. Like I said, it took me an hour to get out of the first town, because like, no one would tell me what I actually needed to do. Uh, other, but, than, other than to put on 300 gold. Right. I think he's dead. <laughs> um, but yeah, after that point, it was personal. It's like, I just spent an hour trying to get out of the first town. <laughs> I can't let this game win. All right, here's our first cutscene with zero frames of walking animation. 
Uh, this is where we find out about the princess, and she just walks up and she's like, hey, I'm the princess, uh, they need my powers to do something bad. And I go, okay. And then they, she gets taken away. Yep. Uh, so I guess that's, that's our focus now. The muddy water can wait. Some child of light you are. Yep. All right, it's time for um, a boss whose formal name, I think, is Irdan. But we've been calling him Turtle Kano for a very long time. <laughs> uh, this is what he does. So he normally will just kind of mosey on towards you. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you shouldn't have told him what to I, do. You, yeah. you made mistakes. I'm not actually sure you. how you did Come this. Come here, you. <laughs> Come here, you. Get, get back in the corner. Get back in the corner. All right. Think about what you've done. <laughs> so, um, I don't even know how this AI manipulation works. It's just like, if you stand over here, he will usually just kind of bump into the wall. He'll continuously try and move left. And then just not do anything. Not, I said, we will continuously <laughs> try to move left. <laughs> All right. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not going to fall for his trap. It's, it's very easy to put yourself in a completely unwinnable situation with this boss if you get yes. cute with where you try to move. Yes. So uh, we never really talked about how the way, uh, the way that knockback works in this game. If you get hit by a projectile, you get, you get hit... Uh, in the direction that the projectile was moving. But if you get hit by a, a melee attack, or really just bumping into an enemy, because no enemy swings at you, they just smash into you, uh, then you get recoiled the opposite direction in which you're facing. So, what that usually means is that if you try and run away from an enemy that just hit you, you get pulled back through his entire sprite, taking damage every few frames. Yeah, so you have no real life frames to speak of in this game. Yep. Right. Yeah, so if you get hit by an enemy, you just have to man up and push him with your, <laughs> with your shield. Hey, hey. Okay. And obviously, if you get pulled through a sprite the size of Turtle Kano, you, uh, you're not going to survive. Yeah, yep. you're dead. Yep. All right, very good. So in one of my practice runs, I killed this boss and then proceeded to not save for the next 10 minutes and then died. <laughs> and I was really sad. Oh, boy, hatchet pigs. Yeah, hatchet pigs. Ooh. Hey, so these guys, this is a very horizontal screen. These guys have infinite range. So sometimes there's just a hatchet that flies across, like from the right, just from anywhere. These guys have cannons for arms. Yeah, yeah they can throw clear through the mountain. Yep. They're pretty, they're pretty nice. Fortunately, I kind of know what to expect there. So I only get hit like half the time instead of always. All right, so again, this is one of the places like Phillips Castle where I know what I have to do so I don't have to go talk to the townspeople and figure out what's going on. Uh, what's going on in the town is that everybody's sick, and the only thing that can cure them is mint, uh, which is only available in this place because they have no grocery stores. This is their grocery store. This, yeah. <laughs> you want to <laughs> go to the castle and pick up some milk? <laughs> Also, if you're like me, you'll be very disappointed to know that, no, the swords on the wall cannot hurt you. And if you're like me, you won't be disappointed that they can't hurt you. Yeah, but you don't like fun. I, you're playing Lagoon. Points. <laughs> oh, that almost just ended me. Yeah. <laughs> that was going to be a good combo. I'm not going to let him kill me. All right, we're going to switch uh, when magic is no longer valuable to us. So we're going to switch to the level 2 fireball, the 3 way fireball. Uh, this is misleading magic because you use it and then it splits into three fireballs and you think, all right, this is great, you know, I want to shoot it to that uh, lookout. <laughs> lookout. Oh, man. Shout outs to elephant knights. And yet oh, these don't make that elephant roar when you kill them. Nope. Easy. Easy now. Okay, I was saying, oh right, the three-way fireball. Um, the split fireballs do zero damage. Yep. Zero. <laughs> so you want to hit with the... We're good, we're good. You want to hit with the big fireball. All right, so, Thunder Armor. We have finally collected armor. Great. However, since it takes eight seconds to equip it, I'm not going to equip it yet. <laughs> um... I have, I have more things to do. 
PJ's just going to drag it around I'm just, with yeah. his free hand. <laughs> Come here, Armor. Yeah. We're going for a walk. Yeah, Where's the other guy? Because yeah, remember, despite this being a Super Nintendo game, it has loading times akin to like a PlayStation or GameCube game or yeah. something. Sega CD. Well, that would require a console to you know work to find out what loading times are on a Sega CD. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, th I don't want to fight him blindly. Come up here. Come up here. Come up. Come up here. You're not blind. You can see the tip of his sword thingies. All right. So, fourth level shield. Awesome. Still not going to quite equip it. <laughs> We're going to wait a little teensy bit longer. <laughs> uh, there's one more thing that I want to I wanna get before I, before I equip my armor. Actually, two things, and then, yeah, we'll 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 get to that. Um, this basement is awesome. Like this this castle is really great because they just put everything that I need just in one room, so I don't have to go all the way around uh, the whole castle. Uh, and I have to be super careful fighting these guys because the damage they do is outrageous. Yeah. All right, so Mint, I got the key item. We're almost good to go. There's just one more pit stop, and then we'll be on our way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he should be up here. Okay. So I actually don't know which one he was. All right. This guy usually hides on the bottom, so I'm going to stay up here. Yeah, there he is. You can see his ears poking around. All right, power ring. Yay! <laughs> Alright, we can almost equip stuff, but I'm going to wait until level 16. Uh, <laughs> so I've got just a few more enemies to kill. I swear there's, there's a reason for this. Is it a good reason? Maybe. <laughs> Alright, I should reach 16 after these two guys. I'm going to Pac-Man group them. Alright. 16. Here we go. So look at all <laughs> all this armor that we were missing. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're good. Now, <laughs> yeah, we can clap for that. <laughs> so now, I am a competent warrior. Come here, you. I'm not scared of you. With a really gorgeous brown color scheme. Yep. Yeah, so life is good right now. Um, the reason that I wanted to wait until level 16 is because of the this weird functionality with, with rings. Uh, when you equip them, they drain your MP and all that. And then when it reaches zero, the game will unequip the ring. But it won't actually recalculate your stats. So the power ring is technically unequipped right now. Like, I'm able to regen MP. But I still have the power bonus from the power ring. Uh, the only time this game will recalculate your stats is if you go into the, um, the equipment menu again. Because then it's like, all right, let's see. What level are you? What do you have equipped? Wait a minute, you don't have power ring equipped. All right, we'll just subtract that. <coughs> um, or if you level up, because then it, it'll do it there. So I didn't want to equip the power ring and then reach level 16 and have to equip it again. That's the only reason I waited. And I'm not going to level up once more before fighting the next boss. So it's just convenient to equip everything there at once. More awful muddy water here. Yep. Yeah, this is a bad place. They drank the water, like they didn't even care. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I don't care about this superstition. Down the hatch, and then they all got sick. If it's brown, drink it down. <laughs> if it's black, send it back. <laughs> all right, so he made tea, and uh, everybody drank it at once, and they're all better now. Some of the other houses in this town have amazing, like, what was it, like windows or beds or something? Yep, the, the houses are just like completely empty. Like they're enormous, but there's nothing in it. Yep. It's like a coffee table with no chairs yep. and a sick person in bed. <laughs> all right, so this is uh, the area behind the church. I have to go around and talk to all these spirits, and they tell me stuff, more stuff about the prophecy that just doesn't really matter. They're like light and dark, blah, 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 have to exist together, balance, such and such. Um, doesn't really matter to me. I just need to get the key to the bad guy's place so I can get rid of him. We get another book. <laughs> um, I'm not going to equip this one, though, because <coughs> the higher level magics are just such garbage. Yeah. They're really, really bad. Yeah, there's what, 16 spells in the whole game? Yeah. And two of them are useful? Uh, three of them. I use three of them. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe four of them, because uh, the enemies in Lagoon Castle are only weak against lightning, but 
I mean, it, it does such bad damage. Yeah. Like right now, I have I don't even know how much MP I have. It it honestly doesn't matter from here on. I have maybe 78 or 80 something. Um, for me to kill an enemy in like the next area with just magic, I would have to use literally all of it. It's just that the MP to damage ratio is really bad here. So yeah, you're not gonna get to see the higher level magics, and some of them are like full screen, and it does like a a cutscene animation thing, and those are the best because they have a chance of just missing. <laughs> So like you use them and it costs like 100 MP or something and then just nothing, nothing happens. The enemies are still running at you. So you're like, come on, come here. It's great. All right. So we got Doom as key. And uh, by now we know what to do with these. Like up until here, the story has basically been find out how to open up the boss door and then make the boss not there anymore. Come on, Hatcher Pig. I know you can do it. Aw. Denied. No. All right, we have, uh, I don't know, maybe we have time for one more comment probably before I get to the boss. All right. We have $100 from Daggett. PJ, you've been my favorite runner since watching your every weapon run of Super Ghouls and Ghosts. <laughs> watching you get heckled by Stamper during Battle Block Theater was awesome. This Lagoon run is icing on the cake. Go fast and good luck. Thank you. All right. So, this boss, this boss is interesting. Um, in theory, he's the easiest boss in the game, but he's killed me a number of times. <laughs> it, yeah, one in one very, very memorable fashion, too, a few weeks ago. <laughs> that uh, that was heartbreaking. <laughs> that was that was awful. Yeah. Frame perfect double KO. All right, so this guy here he is. I don't actually know what that is. I don't know if that's him in a cloak or what, but. Here's his head, and then two hands. Um, <laughs> we have to hit his head and not get clapped by the hands. That's the whole goal of this, uh, this boss. Oh boy. Come on. So close. Yeah, now we'll shoot two fireballs because he has no health left. Pretty much every boss in this game has a desperation mode. All right, we're fine. Good job. And I landed and didn't die. Yeah. Good. Because the best part is that if he gets a double KO on the boss, uh, the game cues the game over effect, but it still actually gives him the prizes yeah. for killing yep. the boss and refills his health. Yeah. And then he falls over dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had I had a run that was on really good pace, and I killed him. And he shot a fireball after he died and after I lost control, and it killed me. And then the game awarded me the items, refilled my health, and then went, game over, you're <laughs> <Yeah>. dead. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, I'm done playing this today. <laughs> yeah. And it, it is rarely possible for you to one cycle that fight, right? Yeah, you yeah. can. It's just, you don't really have an escape plan. Like, you hard right. commit to that. Yep. And I don't really want to do that. All right, uh, brace yourselves. This this room has some sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we're lucky. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Lasers. Oh. Come here, you. Not quite vacuum too. Not it's not quite there. vacuum too. It's not. It's not long-lasting enough to be vacuumed to. No. This is going to like instantly cause the uh, stream viewership to drop by 25% like vacuum 2 would. Oh, easy. Easy now. Easy now. All right. So, this is kind of where we start to piece things together. Well, where we're supposed to piece things together. Um, Thor is apparently the child of darkness in the prophecy, which we should have known all along because he's a jerk. Um, they're using Princess Felicia's power to move Lagoon Castle somewhere safe, which is up in the sky. And then uh, they're going to use Thor's power to resurrect some ancient evil guy uh, called Evil Spirit. Yep. And that's it. And somehow Muddy Water is in there tying things together. So it makes it all possible. Right, right. So this, this place, <laughs> this, this is an interesting town. Uh, everybody here, I think, just hates me, because <laughs> none of them are helpful. Um, what's going on here is that there is a notorious liar that lives in this town, and yeah, 
like, I don't, it should be pretty simple. If he's notorious, everybody should know who he is. <laughs> but nobody knows. Uh, and the only way to find out is to use uh, an item that this person has called the Truth Fire. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure we just set this dude on fire <laughs> until he tells us the truth. All and, fire is Truth Fire. If and, you have yeah, all fire is Truth Fire. <laughs> um. And we don't even really need information from him. We just want to find out who the liar is. Like, we're just curious now. Um, and he just gives us this as a reward. So the fur mantle is what we need to get into the ice cave. Thank you for lighting me on fire. Yeah. <laughs> you found my secret. I've seen the light, and I am it. Uh, so if you don't have the fur mantle, when you enter the ice cave, your health will deplete at the rate that it regens in town which is really, really fast. <laughs> uh, so it is completely impossible to get through this cave without it, even if you have um, all the healing items in the game, which is you know, pretty much nothing anyways, um, and you navigate perfectly to the boss door. There is no key in this area. The boss is just hanging out, and we're going to get rid of him. Um, I'm going to make one detour before I go to the boss room, though. There are, uh, there are three healing items in this game. There's a healing pot, which is way back at the beginning. That restores 10 HP. And makes Giles immortal. Right. <laughs> yep. Uh, for reference, I have right now about a uh, little over 100 HP. So 10 HP is, is nothing. Like, that just, it literally is just it a is waste of a quarter of, of a hit. Yep. Like, you regen faster just standing in place than it would take you to go into the menu and then use it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not going to get one of those. The elixir is really good. Uh, the elixir will fully restore uh, your health completely. Uh, you can only have one of each item, though. So that is my healing item. I get to use it once. Uh, and then there's one more healing item that I get to get from this boss. But that's, that's it. That's all they give you. Um, again, I'm just going to kind of kill enemies along the way. My level isn't super important right now, but it's going to save me from having to grind later, because I do want to be a certain level at the end of the game. Okay, this is Morph Jelly. I don't even know what this thing is, but... <laughs> it's dead now. Yeah, we got we to gotta put her down. Yeah, the lack of healing items on paper sounds unfair, but then you remember that if you're not trying to go super fast, you can literally just stand still and regen anywhere in the game, albeit at a very slow rate outside of town. Yep. All right, so this boss, um, Bad Mr. Frosty, is <laughs> a problem. He has these six little octopus drone things. Um, I'm going to equip the protective ring so I can survive some hits, because literally when I fight him, it's just trade and hope that I come out on top. This boss is extra fun and low percent, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A blast. So I have to break all these drones first, and they fire in random intervals in random directions. Um, so the only way to... Okay, I guess that wasn't the right pixel. And that wasn't either. Uh, I'm unsure if it is actually possible to kill him, though. I'm just going to take the death and reload right in front of him. Yeah. Um, there is a magic pixel that you can stand on, and their ice crystals won't hit you, but you can still damage them. And I have to do that to take out all of these, hopefully without getting hit, um, but getting hit once is not, not, a, uh, not a big problem. That's good. I think this is okay, but... That's good. Nope. Two more up top. And then this guy becomes vulnerable, and that's where the party begins. Yeah. And even though I do have an elixir, I definitely do not want to use it here. I'm going to wait for him to get to the top again. Um, I need to save that elixir for the next fight. Okay, that will work. Nice job. That will work. Um, getting pinned against the ball is actually ideal there, because then you're guaranteed to hit him. Mm -hmm. um, he just continuously moves into you, and it's really, really awkward. Sometimes when you hit him, he'll get stun locked, and then you're able to walk up and finish the job, but it's completely unpredictable. Yeah, that's really the only boss in the entire game that you can just try and brute force after you make him vulnerable. Yeah. 
And again, that's because PJ actually has equipment now for the first time yep. in the game that's somewhat <laughs> on par with where he should be. <laughs> yep. All right, so we get the moon bug from these guys. Um, and then they go send us off to Phantom Hill, which is where we are going to fight the captor of the princess. And this is the, this is the boss right here. Oh, this boss, yeah. when I first fought her, I was convinced that it was impossible to beat the game Deathless, simply because of her. Um, and then I spent <laughs> many, many more hours more, than I more wanted More time to. than any sane human being would. Yep. Yeah, it was it was terrible. Uh, and we, we found a pattern that makes it more possible. <laughs> Speaking of patterns, these birds are these, amazing. These <laughs> birds just do not think. No. <laughs> Squaw. Squaw. <laughs> They literally have no AI. They just go. Yeah. They, they they just do whatever they want to do. They're really, really hard to dodge. Sometimes, like, you'll go down, they'll just follow with you, and you get stuck in this dance for a long time. Um, I leveled up there when I killed that boss, so I have to really re-equip the protective ring. I absolutely need the protective ring. Yep. Uh, my goal here is to kill this boss without using the life ball, but it is entirely dependent on what she wants to happen. Yep. This is her only attack. Yeah. This doesn't really seem that bad. Good use. <laughs> but just wait. <laughs> nice. Strong start. If you haven't guessed by now, these teleports are completely random. Yes. Not only that, but her, her hitbox appears two frames before she does when she teleports. Yep. So it is literally undodgeable. Okay, here we go. Desperation mode. Yep. Two, three. So when she's in desperation mode, she's pretty much too fast for you to just be able to chase her around the room and react to her appearing. But um, she does follow a uh, repeating pattern as far as how many teleport cycles she goes through before she pauses a bit and actually gives you time to run up and give her the business. So it's, um, yeah, it's 9397993 is the pattern. And she just keeps repeating through that. And when PJ gets into this phase, he's just counting the number of teleports and then waiting for an opening to attack. Seven. Wow, I thought I had jumped there. I'm going to equip the life ball. <laughs> Probably a good plan. Come on, you. Really good shape. Now that's here. the Ella fight I know and love. Yeah. yeah. Save, please. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep the sign up. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right. So, uh, our reward. There was a bird up there. Did you see the shadow? <laughs> what? That's not a, a possible spawn point. Hey, who likes oh. Dragon Ball Z? Yep. Here the we best go. Best fight scene ever. They All right. Hey. So that guy in the left that vanished, he has, he has the good movable mantle, too. Uh, he's the bad guy. Uh, this guy is the good guy. He's the one that took me in. Uh, he's like my... Yeah, when, apparently, like, the gods sent down the child of light and the child of darkness, so he took care of me. Uh, anyways, not important. Hey, This wow. is important, though. Oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. If you want to know where the edge is, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. These last few jumps are normally okay. Yep. 
And now you just jump onto the island. And now yeah, yeah, below yeah. the clouds. <laughs> Which, as far as the perspective looks, you should die from landing right. on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere else in the game, you find out, if you can walk off a ledge, don't do it, because it's a game over. Yeah. Until you get there, and it's like, just jump. You'll be fine. Yeah. You got this. Going back to Ella, I don't think it can be overstated just how blatantly unfair that fight is. Yep. Like the fact that PJ only had to use one of the healing items is really impressive. That's hard to do. Yeah, this life ball, um, it fully refills your health, but only after you die. So, I survived with two health left. <laughs> um, I would have, I was almost guaranteed to finish that fight unless I got terrible luck, but. I really, really, really want to save the life ball for the final boss rush. Yeah. Terrible luck meaning either that she spawned right on top of him, yeah. or that she, or that her, the pause in her final cycle was way too far away for him to actually get hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, I've only uh, lost an entire health bar like twice, and that's like you get the instant teleport knockback onto double fireball into another instant <laughs> teleport, and you're like, I well played. Yeah, <laughs> you earned this. Okay, okay. So this is Lagoon Castle. This is the final place, the final area. Uh, this is where Princess Felicia, this is the castle that Princess Felicia relocated to the sky. Uh, we got sent up to this guy from that guy, Matthias, that uh, took care of me when I was younger. Yeah, we, he went puff. we went up to the sky and then we immediately jumped out of it. Yep, he overshot. Yeah, a little bit. He overshot. Yeah, he says, I'll, I will use the rest of my energy and send you up to the clouds. Wait, hold on. Important time. Oh, almost. <laughs> All right, I said I'd do it once. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> Waste a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it, though. It's worth it. Sweet statue. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, that's a key item. They don't tell you that. Nope. Um, you can you can make it to the top floor of this place, and then you're like, hey, I found Princess Felicia. She's right there. Uh, I don't know how to get get to her. So you have to have the statue, and the statue just the statue. Is, <laughs> it's really just the worst game of rock paper scissors. Statue <laughs> breaks mirror. Mirror breaks rock. <laughs> we can only assume that rock breaks statue, unless statue is just cheater. Um. This entire room right here, there's absolutely nothing. There's no enemies. I can't attack still. OK, I didn't even know if I could. I don't know if I've ever tried. Uh, so I'm just going to walk to the next room. We have uh, a bit of time for some more donations. All right. We have a $100 donation from Aztail. Come on, PJ. Who needs armor? Get that off now. <laughs> we have $500 from SD47. Someone please buy Nasir and upgrade to a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> If not, name Kane Lemmy. Rest in peace, Lemmy. We have an anonymous $100 donation. Haven't seen Lagoon before, but it's lovely! And PJ is hilarious. And cancer sucks. All right, so here we are here, the Silence Terrace. Uh, this is where we finally use the Moonstone. Uh, we hold this up into the light, and then uh, we get the Moon Blade which is something that they don't tell you you actually need, but you absolutely do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, sword, this is the strongest sword in the game, and it's required in order to be able to kill the final form of the final boss, but the game does absolutely nothing to, either, to tell you where it is, other than vagaries, or to stop you from getting to the final boss without it. Mm -hmm. And that is why I have never beaten <laughs> this game, because uh, <laughs> I got all the way to the final boss, and yep, yeah, without yep. the moon blade, and I, then I was done. Then you just can't figure out why you can't damage anything. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. <laughs> when I tried, I tried fighting him with just the, the short sword before, and I wasn't even able to get it to ping. Like, when you do zero damage because of that damage bug in the, the formula, um, you'll swing and it'll ping and they, they blink white, but it just doesn't do anything. On that fight, I wasn't even able to get a ping. Like, it was just like, nope. No, you made a mistake. You deal with it. <laughs> but the worst part, though, is that it's just the final form of the final yeah. boss, though. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, what, three there's other... Six. There's six final bosses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get all the way to number six before you are out of luck without the moon sword. Yeah. yeah. And they're not easy bosses, either. Right? No. No, we will see them. All right, so I walked by that one chest. Um, you kind of saw it off in the corner there. Uh, that chest refills my MP, but I have no need for it right now. 
Um, I am going to get the most well-hidden elixir, though. And because of the camera, it's literally hidden just off-screen, and it's really hard to find. <laughs> but it's there. So that's the, uh, that's the second elixir in the game. Uh, now there really are no other healing items. Well, no consumable healing items. I'm, I'm going to get one more. So there's a kind of an, an asterisk on that statement. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a bit of a roundabout route here because I, I do want to be a certain level uh, for the... Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> no, way. no, no, no. Up. <laughs> <laughs> come here, come here. You saw what happened. Maybe. Yeah, I don't think he has much for death perception. He's got one really good eye. <laughs> How much peripheral vision you get on that? No. But after the south, he's all about it. So you can still see, like, I have pretty great armor at this point. You can get the fifth armor and the fifth shield. I'm going to get the fifth one of those, but I don't actually remember what one it is. <laughs> I know what chest it's in, but I don't know what item it is. Uh... I, I have a feeling it's armor. I don't think I get the moon shield. But these enemies still just hit like a truck. Like, it's it's ridiculous. And your your health regen rate never changes. It's always two per... Two, uh, two HP per tick. It's not like regen based on percentage of max health. It's just like, here it is. Deal with it. Um, I'm getting the curing ring. It, it's an item that I haven't used in a really long time since the new, re, uh, the new route. But I'm getting it just in case things go really, really bad on the final boss rush. Um, I have Elixir and I have Life Ball. So I already have two healing items. And for most of the fights, I'm planning on not taking damage. But what I plan on and what happens are usually different. <laughs> so that's just for, just for absolute safety. Um, it's very unlikely that I'll need it. But I'd much rather have it than uh, die to the final boss and lose six minutes. It's almost time to save the princess. We've just got two more enemies. We have $50 from Narcona. I enjoy these Lagoon runs so much. I'm sorry, PJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I love this game. I shouldn't, but I do. <laughs> All right. We have the statue. We it's found the Hall of Mirrors. And we blew up the princess. <laughs> Who still doesn't have a walking animation. No, no. <clears throat> Budgets. All right, how many of these guys Favorite are sprite in the game. Yeah, these, these guys are nice. <laughs> he's got his own Nessir sword. Yep. This one he's facing Just left. when he's facing left or right. Yep. Yeah. So that guy had it in his right hand. This guy has it in his left hand. So he's walking the opposite way. And then uh, absolutely giant sword when he walks down. Yep. I need to kill a lot of these enemies. Um, the, the next boss is another one of the annoying teleporting bosses who teleports faster and faster as the battle rages on. And it's important that you kill him in either one cycle or two cycles. Like, you don't want to do just short of a full bar of health because then things get really dangerous. Uh, so it's really, really good to reach this level before I fight this boss. And in the process, I'm going to go grab whatever armor is in this thing easy now. Look at how big that sword is, and then he turns. <laughs> oh. Alright, moon armor, that's what it is. All right. I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. You thought about it. I thought about it, I was still thinking about it, but... The loop started right as you came out of that. Uh, Alright, one more. So and I did get the moon shield is elsewhere in this castle, but not worth the detour. Yeah, the moon shield is in the uh, the purple pallet room, the previous one, right before the princess. But um, it's, it's a, like way up a windy path that takes ages to get to. Yeah, it's a really, really long walk. Yeah, it's like a minute and a half to two minutes. And you can kill a lot of enemies and probably get another level, but it just takes so long. And you'll still be under leveled for this area of the game, no matter what you have for equipment. So. All right. So this boss, this boss is called Battler, and he has like two rotating spiky golem things. Eyeballs, eyeball golems, Igor and Ivan. 
<laughs> I think I think that's what you called them years ago. Um, so what I'm going to do is stand on this kind of safe spot, and there are two teleport positions very close to there. Uh, one should be one pixel above me, and one is, like, two south. That's too far up. So we're in trouble now. We're going to need a really good... Hey! Hey! <laughs> Attaboy. That's what I like to see. <laughs> so he's really annoying when he gets that low because, like, his sprite will appear, but his hitbox disappears, like, two full seconds before he teleports. All right, we're just going to jump right over the horizon. <laughs> yeah. It worked in the cloud. Might yeah, may as well. Again. May as well. Um, if you walk off that ledge, you die. Yep. Just want to point that out. Hey, man. Perspe <laughs> perspective is for suckers. I should be level 20... I don't want to equip. Sure you do. Well, it, this is happening. <laughs> I'm already in the menu. Committed. All right. I am no longer going to be killing enemies. I'm going to walk right to the boss door. We've got six fights in a row. Um, there's a short cutscene between five and six, so I'll have some time to explain things there. But, um, yeah, this is, this is an interesting, <laughs> interesting boss gauntlet. Um, the first boss is just like a shell, and it just kind of sits there, and you wail on it. But it shoots fireballs sometimes, and uh, it's, again, just like completely random intervals with no warning. Um, so if you get really bad luck, you can actually die here. Um, if you get normal luck, he just he usually won't hit you. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, and then the boss after him. It's just like all the bosses will either die instantly, or you're just in for a world of pain. <laughs> This part of the task, I remember being pretty wild, too. Yeah. Like a five-minute-long Thorbird fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually... I'm still under-leveled a bit, but I'm to the point where, with the Power Ring, I can do appreciable damage to most of these bosses. Um, the Tass, the Tool Assisted Speedrun, fights these bosses at such a low level and with absolutely no equipment, and uh, it hits... I think, I think it has to hit every single boss 128 times. <laughs> Which is great. Mm -hmm. All right, here we are. Gonna equip the elixir. I'm gonna save one final one last time. time. <laughs> that whiteboard and is getting its mileage right yep, now. Yeah, it sure is. And away we go. Is it because of your route changes that you didn't have to fight anything in that final room, or? Um, the uh, if you're level 25 when you kill battle, come on you. Come on you. You heard you talking about him. All right, I should still be able to do this just fine. Um, you can only, I would say you can only approach him from the left, but he approaches you. Yeah. So you, you can only have him approach you from the right. Um, if he hits you, it's, it's curtains. Yeah. Like, if he hits you with his actual attack, it, it's over. Well, how nice of him to die so far away from the door, right. too. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, so this guy, he's back. Uh, he was actually a bear. Um, this is the only boss in the game that you can actually push, and I don't want him to be there. Uh, I want him to be... Not there. I want to, yeah, right there is fine. No, 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 no. I need you to be right more. This is, uh, there you are. There you are. He's a bear because of anime, I guess. No, no, no. Good enough. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Come on, dude. <laughs> Just get up there. I think he, he is, is really Ella. not cooperating. There we go. I don't actually want to kill him there, though. I want him to be to the right. I've actually never seen a misbehave this bad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. There we go. Fight That's where it should happen. So what I want to do here, this is just an absolute mess, this fight. I want to get damage boosted in front of him and then just kill him. Nice. Like that. Uh, he instantly transforms into a bird. The Thor frame bird. that he dies. That's why he was a jerk. Yep. It all makes sense. <laughs> um, jerks. There is one safe spot here. And... Uh, if you kill Thor from behind or from the left, you instantly are killed. Yep. <laughs> because this bird spawns the next frame and you get pulled through his hitbox and his damage is so high that you, you're just gone. Yep. They stole the background of this fight from Quintet Games, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I 
I'd I... really like to save the life ball for the next boss, but yeah. we'll see what Thorbird has in mind for this. The hitbox is not generous. No. I think you can probably guess that, but okay. Nicely done. All right, good. All right. Um, so what happens now? We just killed him. We never liked that guy, but I guess we should probably lie to Send him. Sent us in all kinds of dumb fetch quests or What a jerk. Not only was a, he a bird, but he could teleport. That's what you get for <laughs> losing your pendant. Still, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Thor brought back the evil spirit, and that's who we're going to kill next. Uh, the evil spirit is a, an enormous troll. Um, he, he's kind of like if you were to combine Ella with the red gargoyle, or the, the gray gargoyle. So he'll teleport on top of you, and then whip you. Um, and he starts the fight by teleporting directly on top of you before he can move. So you are forced to damage boost away. If you don't push a button, you die in about half a second. Um, so I have to kind of anticipate his spawn and damage boost away. And then I'm going to try and just stun lock him for his entire health meter. So we will see what happens. So time is when he explodes. Yeah, time is when he explodes. All right, I got the pendant. I don't care. <laughs> time to do this. Um, it's worth noting, sometimes he can teleport super early and kill me before I'm ready. So there's that. Okay. Yes. Time. What were we looking at there? 129, what? Oh, 09, wow, that's quite good. Yeah, that's very good. It's uh, only seven minutes off my PB. <laughs> despite, Sounds... lot, despite very liberal use of that whiteboard. Yeah, the route, sort of... the route difference between going for a deathless run and what I did there was about like four to four and a half minutes. So it was like two and a half minutes of errors. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, sweet, that was Lagoon. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, feel free to stick around for the rest of Awful Games Block. We have some really awful games coming up. Yep. <laughs> and remember, if you see muddy water, that means there's demons. It, yeah, it means water. there are okay. demons afoot. Yep. Keep your water unmuddied. We're going to run a quick ad, so stay tuned and we'll be right back.